survival myths, ladies and gentlemen. I can tell you a whole bunch, but some of them might not be true. One of them that could have went over your head, possibly, is that I'm not the deadliest creature in the whole animal kingdom. Now let me show you. Look, just look at me in this tight ass shirt. You wanna mess with me? Nah, nah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I'm just looking out for you. Uh, let's get into it though, man. Appreciate you for stopping by. And actually, you know what? Right before we start this video, I just wanna say thank you very much. We hit 1,000 subscribers yesterday. One whole thousand. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. But uh, let's not cry about it too much. Let's get into it. You're lost in the mountains. Oh no! Stray in the jungle or stranded in the desert. How do you survive? Surely you must have a mental checklist of survival strategies from all those movies and For TV sure. shows you Obviously. watch. Obviously, but Duh. which survival tips will save your life and which will more likely get you killed? Let's find out. I'm Stu, and welcome Who to the Hunt. Nah. Well all right. First of all, how are you gonna make a cartoon animation video and then pop Timu Tony Stark on the screen? We sort the truths from the myths What's and going the facts on? from the misconceptions. Please like, subscribe, and let us Is that know even in the, the same guy? about any survival tips you've been told that are less than useful. Should you light a fire in a cave? Um, now let's think about this. Should you light a fire in a cave? I don't see no problem with that. As long as there's ventilation. I don't see a problem with that. You're lost in the mountains and the sun is going down. I'll give it Protection a thumbs up. From the elements is obviously going to be advantageous to survival. And like many an intrepid explorer in films and on TV, you happen upon a cave. You establish it's free of any other residents, bears and whatnot, but it's pretty chilly. Bears. Like all good survivalists, you're carrying a flint and steel, so you gather the driest looking. So like, did the caveman spawn in with that shit? Cause how did they, how did they make a fire? Cause like if I go out in the woods, how am I gonna, how am I gonna make a fire? They must have like spawned in with that. ...materials you can find around the mouth of the cave. But is it safe to light a campfire in your temporary residence? Smoke inhalation can be deadly. <laughs> so the last thing you want in the confines of your cavern is a dangerous buildup. It might feel like the mouth of the cave would be the best place to light your fire. Why not? So the smoke can escape through the entrance. But according to an article published in the scientific journal Nature, which used modeling and real life experiments to investigate Neanderthal cave fires, this may actually be the worst position in terms of smoke dispersal. How? The study found that a large amount of smoke ended up back in the cave, building up to unsafe levels. They also found that when the fire was placed at- Well, just like flip the fire, bro. The, no one thinks nowadays. Cave, that really gets me so mad. Flow meant that smoke actually dispersed more favorably, rising up the back wall and via the ceiling, leaving through the mouth of the cave. Even so, the part of the cave containing the fire, which is obviously the warmest part, had smoke levels that were extremely unsafe for medium to long duration exposure. Interestingly, huh. the study also noted that Neanderthal fire hearths were most likely to be situated in the middle of the cave. The authors concluded that they used this placement as a sort of compromise, enabling some degree of smoke smoke dispersal, but also allowing room for communal gathering around the fire. On top of the smoke problem, if the sea- Alright bro, like, you, like, shut up bro, I get it. Floor. Oh my gosh. Your body, providing much needed Jeez. insulation. Does alcohol warm you up? Yes, it does. That's literally a fact, bro. That's literally a fact. I just saw a video on Instagram of some dude that got locked in the stadium in Germany. He was watching England, England, Serbia, I think. Are they even in the same group? I don't even know. It was England's first game, bro. The guy woke up. He was drunk out of his mind. He's recording. He's like, they left me in the stadium, and that, and that, and that. Just fucking, because he was freezing, bro. He was freezing. Hmm. And that. 
On the subject of insulation, some of you might be familiar with the term beer jacket or beer coat, the idea that a dose of booze can protect you from the effects of the cold. So, should you whip out the hip flask Dude, who and turn is the tipple as night falls and temperatures plummet? Though those of you of drinking age may be adamant that you've actually experienced it, Oh God, do I love those fly boys. I'm afraid it's our <laughs> duty to deliver a double shot of bad news. Not only is the idea that the hard stuff can protect you from the cold a myth, but, depending on your circumstances, it could actually be very dangerous. Ooh. The reason you might feel warm after consuming a boozy beverage is that alcohol itself acts as a vasodilator, meaning what? it causes blood vessels to widen. When the blood vessels near the surface of your skin dilate, the increased blood flow is registered by the densely distributed sensory receptors as a sensation of warmth. Crucially though, oh. your body temperature isn't actually rising. So you're not actually warm. Huh. Instead, the heat <laughs> energy generated by your metabolism is being re All right, next one, man. <laughs> so put the hip flask down and try to get some sleep. Does boiling water make it safe to drink? Yes, bro. Have a yes, now if he says no, he's lying. He's lying. I'm apparently 0 for 3 in this video. Someone's lying and it's not me. You wisely binned off the booze, you make it through the night. But you wake with a raging thirst. Oh my gosh, bro. This morning. <sighs> Yo. This morning, bro. I had the worst hangover in my entire existence of life. I don't even know where my pack of gum went. Alright. I brought gum with me. To be found. The wristband that was supposed to be on my wrist, deleted. I don't, don't know where it is. Um, anyways, I got a bag of red Doritos, devil dog cakes on the way back. Smack that down. Um, it's still cutting season, by the way. Um, yeah, I woke up this morning. Jeez. Like a damn endomorph sitting on my head like a watermelon. Dude. Shit was hurting, bro. Real bad. I, like, tried, like, staying up longer to, like, fight it. I'm the fucking man. I don't need no Tylenol. Bad decision. Rookie move. I should have took the Tylenol quicker. I ended up taking it. Down five liters of water. Purified. Straight from Walmart. It's the cheapest ones. They taste good. Um, yeah, and then it went away, but I was fighting for my life, man, fighting for my life. Along with shelter, hydration is right there at the top of the list of survival musts. Venturing out you once must. more, you find a rather dubious looking Damn. pool of water near your cave, Damn. which, along with an unusual colour, boasts a distinctly off-putting aroma. Still, water is water, right? Is Boil it? it, and we're good to go. Well, the boiling point of water, 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, certainly is hot enough to kill most bacteria, viruses, and parasites almost instantly. And a good rule of thumb is to aim for a vigorous rolling boil for a full minute. Okay. At higher altitudes, the decrease in atmospheric pressure results in a lowering of water's boiling point. It oh. actually decreases by roughly 1 degree Celsius every 300 meters above sea level. The CDC advises that... Okay, so, so does that mean the bacteria dies quicker? Or oh, no. See, this is where they're... This is where they're getting you, man. At an altitude Come over on. two kilometers or six and a half you. thousand feet, you should keep a rolling boil going for a little longer. Though this extended boil won't raise the temperature of the water any higher, that would defy physics, the kill time of certain pathogens may be longer at lower boiling temperatures. Three minutes should do the trick. Unfortunately, though, not all boiled water is safe to drink. Should How? the land you're on have a history of agricultural or industrial use, a nearby by farm or mine, for example, toxic chemical and or heavy metal contaminants may accumulate in pools of standing water. Boiling the water won't remove these contaminants. Algal toxins from cyanobacteria, commonly known as blue-green algae, are also not neutralized by boiling. Hey man, look, I know you're English and all that, right? But that says algae. Okay? That's algae. Not algae. 
Wait, maybe he's right. Maybe it is Al Gay. Al Gay. Al. Shit. I hate that. I hate when English people say that shit, though. I hate it. Or you'll say router. Uh, there you go. It's router. What is it? Router. Go reset the router. Then they'll be like, how do you say route? Root. Root. Like, what the fuck? I'm like, sh like, oh my god. Just bro. these toxins <laughs> may lead to gastroenteritis, causing. I love my English people, though. I love English people. That's the thing. I just love making fun of them. It's the funniest Vomiting, thing ever. Vomiting, diarrhea, fever, and <laughs> headaches, and may even affect liver and nervous system functioning. None of these things are going to help you survive in the wilderness. Helpfully, several US government websites host guidelines to help you tell the difference between simple aquatic weeds and harmful algal blooms. We've put some links in the description below. Oh, thank on God. Balance, Thank God, I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on that link when I'm stranded. Thank you, thank you so much. If your pool of water can be passed over in favor of running water, it's probably a safer bet to boil and drink that instead. Although cyanobacteria are present in running water, harmful algal blooms are much less likely to occur in rivers and streams. Mm. Can you drink water from a cactus? Why did he say it like that? In rivers and streams. Can we dissect real quick? Can you drink water from a cactus? Like, bro's sitting in his room, just like me. Just like me, he's sitting in his room. He's going, this is what he's doing. At fucking 12 a.m. Can you drink water from a cactus? Nah, nah, I didn't like that take. Redo. Can you drink water from a... Like... I'm just a hater, man. Honestly, this is why I have no friends. Let's raise the stakes in our hydration challenge. Take ourselves off to somewhere even oh, more Tony hostile Stark's to back. survival. The desert. A oh, formidable foe for him. even the most seasoned survival him. expert. No shelter from the blazing sun, a dangerous lack of navigational cues, and almost by definition, little to no water. It's understandable then that the sight of a fat green cactus might lift the spirits of a dehydrated, waterless wanderer. Cacti, ah. like all plants, need water to survive. Surely this spiny desert dweller is a guaranteed thirst quencher. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. First of all, cacti don't contain reservoirs of free-flowing water. Instead, they have dense, spongy flesh that stubbornly withholds whatever moisture the plant contains. Ew. And it gets Whoa. worse. Should you manage to squeeze... You literally can't even... Ew, that thing's got, not going anywhere near me, bro. If you drop from the tissue, it may do more harm than good. The water inside many cacti species is highly acidic and contains toxic alkaloids. It's for this reason that the name given to the coval barrel cactus by the Seri people of the Mexican state of Sonora is the barrel that kills. Consumption <laughs> of its flesh and or juices is reported to cause nausea, diarrhea, and even temporary paralysis, Shit. all of which represents obvious barriers to survival in the desert. It's likely that this widespread but dangerous survival strategy reached the public imagination via the 1948 Western the Three Godfathers, starring John Wayne. The only water we're gonna get's right over here, barrel head. It ain't the best water, and it'll take time. In which... <laughs> yeah, I would have been a crazy actor back in the day. I would have been nuts. Shit. Maybe like Leonardo DiCaprio level back in the day. That would have been me. The Duke and his traveling companion chop up a barrel cactus in search of water. Thanks for nothing, JW. At a pinch, you may be able to find some water in rock crevices, where changes in temperature overnight may cause condensation and- That is so fucking vile. That is so vile. Pooling to occur. Pockets of more lush looking vegetation- How, Who put that rock up there? And animal tracks- What is going on? also point to the presence of water. Though desert dwelling animals are generally able to survive for longer periods without water, and may travel long distances to find it. Really, the best advice here is to never ever head out into the desert without <laughs> adequate quantities of water, and to make Just sure you travel it, with somebody That's the who best has advice. plenty of experience and local knowledge. We've done the mountains and we've done the desert. 
Let's cap things off with a hazard <laughs> that's exclusive <laughs> to environments with plenty of fresh. All right. Oof. Okay. Last one. Should you? Should you? Burn. Burn. Salt. Salt? Or rip leeches off. Or rip. What? What is going on? Off. The rainforest. Lush, green, and humid. Here, moisture is so abundant that creatures that need to stay wet to survive can get by on the Ew, grass. So creatures slimy. like leeches, for example. Everybody's favorite, wriggling, glistening, blood oh, so can be disgusting. found in oh and around gosh, that's fresh so water disgusting. the world over. And in the world's rainforests, they are particularly prevalent and can be horrifically oversized. That's not, no, 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 that is not real. You're telling me that's real? That is a real animal. I am not leaving my house, bro. I am not leaving any and the state. I'm not leaving my city, town, nothing, bro. That's out there in the, the world. The giant Amazon leech can grow to 45 centimeters, <laughs> almost 18 inches in length. Perhaps thanks to an iconic photo from 1971 depicting a U.S. soldier in Vietnam using a cigarette to burn leeches from his forearm. Many of us have been left. With I'd probably just. Uh, Just fucking shoot it off me, bro. Bro. Oh the impression. God. Look, you signed me up for the... I, I I was drafted into this war, bro. I didn't I didn't want none of this fucking bullshit on me, bro. I'm more scared of the damn bugs. The fucking mosquitoes, bro. That this is the Shit. best way to remove them. Ew. Sir, it's to burn off the leeches. <laughs> While burning a leech obviously will kill it, it may have some unintended and downright unsafe consequences. Ew. Like all animals, including us, the digestive tract of a leech contains a multitude of bacteria. Burning a leech that is attached to your skin could cause it to regurgitate some of the contents of its stomach into the wound it's made on Ew, your body. And what? these microbial invaders could go on to cause infection. Should you pour salt on them to get them off? No, the same problem applies. So, how should you remove a leech? According Shoot to it. Anna Phillips, a curator and leech According to Anna Phillips, a zoo animal lover, she says, you have to live with it. I, I don't want to hear none of this by Anna Phillips. I already know what she's about. Expert at the Smithsonian. A leech holds onto its host with suckers at each end. Damn, I need me a bitch with suckers. Fuck. Breaking the seal <laughs> is enough to pull them off. Gently slide a flat object, a fingernail or credit card, for example, under the edge of the sucker, and it should let go. It's important not to pull or rip the leech off, however, as Ew. the suckers or teeth may be left behind in the wound, again leading to infection. Alternatively, as unappealing as it may sound, you could just let the leech do its thing, no. stay attached for 30 to 60 minutes, after which they simply drop off. Ew. While we've shed light on some pretty- Bro, I feel like you would get, like, like if it's on you, you are you not gonna get sick? Because the shit that's in it already, bro. Like, and it's mouth fucking you. You know, like. Ah, uh, thanks for watching, bro. Educational. We've been real educational this week. You know, since we've been gaming, rotting the minds. We gotta get real educational here on this channel. But. Do your thing. The like button is calling your name. The sub button is beaming. And, uh, hey, you got another follower on Twitch. Shout out Z Zia T TG. You the GOAT, Zia, Zia TJ, TJI. Uh, anyways, I'll catch you, man. Thanks for watching. Um, gaming up at two or something. I hope. I'm going to go get a pancake combo. Bye.